brings so, into question a whole bunch of stuff about about artificial intelligence and you know the the right to to freedom and, and things like that. If you're not fully human, and I just start thinking about like the uh, personhood arguments. And yeah, we're ready to think of Vision as a person. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how like they it, th that the fact that he's android, or, you know, the his, whether he's actually conscious. This just never comes up. He's just a person, and he's just treated like that. You know. Yeah, they. Where it's the whole did. it's the whole cornerstone of some films. Mm -hmm. well, we do have a, an AI yeah. philosopher on the crew here. And, yes, we do. Um, um, the thing is, the Turing test, he passes, right? And my favorite Star Trek Next Gen episode is uh, Measure of a Man, where they try to decide whether or not data is property. Fantastic. And John Luke's argument is it doesn't matter what you're saying about him. What you decide about him tells us who you are. So a AI expert, is Vision a person? Well, yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> there we go. Well, he is. He is. Um, uh, um, but like, if we're if I if we're going in my opinion, absolutely yes. Uh, if I was going to try to speak for the consensus of the community, um, his um, personhood is is uh, dependent on a couple of things. Uh, one of which is autonomy, which seems clear that he has, but another would be would be consciousness and. Um, the different theories of consciousness that are most popular. I got to roll up my sleeves this. here. What? <laughs> I got to roll up my sleeves here. We're rolling into consciousness. Let's I, go ahead. I will <laughs> I'm writing a book on consciousness right now. Is that your specialty? Yeah. Oh, I, uh, maybe we could talk offline about it. But um, there, uh, there are several major theories of consciousness. And um, depending on the way that he is programmed, which we don't know, um, certain theories of consciousness would say that he is, and others would say that he is not. That is one of those that when we have these debates, ultimately, when you get to, is this being sentient or mimicking it amazingly well, there's a point at which we go, we have to go by what it looks like. You know, how do I know you're <laughs> sentient? <laughs> what it looks like down, but, but like not just behavior, but also what it looks like in terms of how our representation is processed and how our is it how much of it is just a lookup table versus um, considering alternatives? And, you know, when we think of behavior more than just what can be seen a, bo uh, a body doing, if we can like get under the hood and see how things are being processed, then we, we have more information. Go ahead, Scott. No, I was going to say in a court of law, we don't ask about sentience. We ask, did the, did the system have the ability to foresee the consequences of what it did? Right. Well, we do ask it, about sentience a little bit when it refers to victimhood. I don't know. What people do is tell you that they, they feel bad or not. You don't ask them if they're sentient. You ask them how they feel. And I've been doing you, my emails wrong. But, <laughs> sentience, but, but, but sentience with, um, with people in um, states like uh, abnormal mental, uh, like brain states and whatever, mm -hmm. their, their sentience is in question sometimes. If they can't communicate, if they... Um, no, you know, like, like like psychosis, you mean? No, no, like like uh like the people who we thought were um in, in minimally Vegetable, conscious states, but are states, yeah. but are actually locked, locked in, in syndrome. Mm -hmm. They're actually locked in. We are wrong. Like they they have more they have more personhood because of it, right? So you know, and then the law does struggle to try to understand that stuff. Animals too. Animal well, consciousness I, is also relevant. See, I would agree. I just don't know that psychology currently has the nomenclature to deal with this. I mean sentient, non-sentient, when what you end up doing is looking at, at brain, brain waves and that sort of stuff. So I, I agree with you, we do those diagnostics. Part of what I'm looking at is whether or not the, the, tradi the, the traditional psychological nomenclature, behavior, action, perception, cognition, whether or not these things can really keep up with the current data. And, you know, I kind of argue they, they've been fantastically useful in a scientific sense. Um, at the same time, complex systems theory and all kinds of other, what I would call holistic ways of looking at phenomena are uh, l recognizing there's some baby we left out with the bathwater that we may be able to deal with from a dynamical systems perspective, a more holistic take. I would say the vision is a system that's fully capable of sustaining himself, doing all the things that we say humans can accomplish. I mean, we're going to be facing this in 50 years with the with AI and how they're going to have rights. It, it, 
I, so, was, I was just reading an article about um, about with, with the, the brain chips and stuff like that. There was some sort of uh, conversation on the on the Musk on the Elon Musk side of things, of like brain chips being implement implanted and stuff. I'm like, this is oddly oddly reminiscent of the Mind Stone, just a little bit. <laughs> dude, they already we've already got the thing two inches from our brain, mm -hmm. right? It's already two inches from our brain. It's just another couple of inches, and then you, all you got to do is wink or something, and you're never alone. Um, I, I think people are going to flock to it. I, I have a patient recently who um, they came back to, to see me after, you know, maybe like a year or so they were, they were doing all right. And their most recent obsession and intrusive thought was, what if I can't tell who's uh, real and who's not? What if people mm. in front of me are, um, mm. are like, have been replaced with, by robots and they're not psychotic. It's more of an intrusive thought. And I'm, and I'm thinking to myself, oh, they got to go watch Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. season mm. four and they got to go watch Westworld, the whole thing. <laughs> This is actually one of the central questions in a whole lot of science fiction. What does it mean to be human? It, all throughout science fiction, this question comes up over and over. A lot of Star Trek, you know, that, the question about data, why we, we got to do a whole book about the psychology of Westworld, you know, bringing in these issues. Doctor Who, what are, what are the uh, Doctor's main enemies, uh, the Daleks and the Cybermen, you know, each of them organic beings who've taken on mechanical parts to themselves. Yeah. So when we go into this issue of is vision sentient, is vision human, it still gets into that same issue about what does it mean for us to be human as well. Yeah. yeah I, I gotta good. run everybody. I gotta, yeah. I gotta go host the Hey talk. Jim, nice to meet you. Man. All nice right. to meet you, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. That issue of are we in a matrix? Are we part of somebody's computer program? It's like, I don't care. It's you know, like, that's the thing. Yeah, I, I'm real enough for me, so... Well, the major plot failing of Matrix was the idea that a pill will solve it, right?